Welcome to Ixion. I am Caledorn, and I am very eager to present this Let's Play series to you. Ixion is a game that I have spent around 40 hours in at the time that I'm recording this video, and I have been more than a bit hyped about this game before I even got a press key. Speaking of which, thank you so much both to Casido and Bulwark Games for providing me with a press key for the game. Ixion is a bit difficult to describe in terms of exactly what genre it falls into. The closest relative I can think of would be Frostpunk, which is a game that I absolutely love to bits. However, while the game has many similarities to Frostpunk, there is also ample differences and very different challenges that this game presents. And that's why it is kind of difficult for me to really place the game in a genre, because there's all kinds of things here. Factories, resource gathering, refining resources, population management, and a storyline that is absolutely awe-inspiring. To be honest, I would love to see a TV series adaptation of the storyline in this game. That's how well written I feel it is. Now, my Let's Play series are usually what you can describe as raw footage. That means that I rarely edit the videos, but just play and record. Sometimes pausing the recording because I have to wait for something. I'm not sure how I'll go about doing this with this specific series, as there are periods in the game that involves waiting for events and things to finish. So we'll see what I end up doing in regards to that with this specific series. But enough talking. You guys want to see the game, and I want to play it, so that's what we'll be doing. Although we have to take a quick look at the options menu before we go into the game, so if you're not interested in that, there are timestamps down in the video timeline. So you can skip ahead to when I actually click the new game button instead, and yes, that does include the intro cinematic. So, the settings. We have uh, language, we have tutorials on and off, we have construction mode, whether you want to zoom to rotate. It gives you a description when you hover above it, so when enabled, selecting a building for placement in construction mode resets the zoom level of the camera to default, and while placing the building, the scroll wheel is rebound to building rotation, instead of having to use the R key or whatever key you bind that to. Uh, this is nice, continue playing dialogue when game is paused. Uh, you have subtitles, and then you have various camera sensitivities. The keyboard sensitivity for interior view, the mouse sensitivity, rotation for both, exterior for both, and of course the planetary system map camera sensitivity for both, and also for the rotation of that. Under key bindings, you have the uh, basic key bindings that you expect. I haven't felt that I miss anything here. Uh, the only thing potentially could be a photo mode where I could pan the camera in different angles than the default ones, but they might add that later on. Um, the, uh, the option to uh, remove the UI, which is Control u it says hold control. Uh, I kind of... Uh, feel that this should just say control u but anyways you can remove the user interface by holding by pressing control u and then clicking control u again takes it back so then you have the display options i am as usual playing in borderless windowed resolution monitor frame rate you can cap the frame rate you can turn on and off vsync you have anti-aliasing anti um and you have the torus type for that. And you have a gamma slider here. Under graphics, you have the quality settings. I've turned off motion blur because I detest motion blur. But for the rest, I have everything on the maximum setting here. Uh, I don't think there's a higher setting for these two. No, nope. so everything is on ultra and high. Audio, you have sliders for master volume, music volume, side effects volume, and voice volume. And under accessibility, they've added misophonia mode, which is interesting. Um, the reason why they've added uh, misophonia mode is that in the beginning of the uh, game, there is a, a dialogue where the voice actor is eating an apple. And I will enable misophonia mode uh, for the benefit of those of my viewers that might have misophonia and would find it... Um, very, very annoying to have to listen to that guy eat an apple. So we'll we'll turn that on. And that is basically the options here. So with that, let's click new game and enjoy the uh, intro cinematic. I was very amused by the location of uh, the uh, 
well, launch pad station, I guess you could say, or space center. So uh, pay attention to that, because I found it quite amusing. I will mute my microphone while the uh, cinematic runs. Welcome on board, passengers. And now we'll be introduced to our PA. Shuttle EMV Sharon is now docked. Sector 1 empowered and pressurized. Munchie decontamination protocol online. Disembarkation authorized. Message to crew members. Welcome on board the Tycoon, property of Dolus Aerospace Engineering Corporation. You will soon be given your assignments, but until then, please continue to wait near the docking bay. We hope you have a productive voyage. And we'd like to thank you for your contribution towards humanity's future. Administrator, I am Eden, the personal assistant installed on board the Tycoon. In accordance with the Munchie protocol, I have been designed to take into consideration your complete psychological profile so that I may more accurately respond to any needs you may have. My primary purpose is to ensure the Tycoon's automated systems function efficiently. I will keep track of the tasks that are necessary for you to fulfill your prerogative of reaching Proxima Centauri and carrying out field research, mining operations, manufacturing protocols, and Dolos colonization tests. Administrator. I wanted to introduce you to your first tasks person. 
I'm Dolo's cryonics lead, Marduk council member Giovanni Batista. So, let's see. Your first objective will be to begin setting up essential infrastructure aboard the Typhoon, meeting the environmental conditions that are required to support your crew. Having laid these foundations, you will then oversee the installation of the Vol engine and perform a short test jump to Proxima Centauri. Upon arrival, your research teams will carry out a brief survey of local space, gather a few rock and coal dust samples, fire up the colonization protocol, begin building the foundations for mankind's future, yada, yada, yada. And then you'll come back. Now, in order to achieve this, you'll need to familiarize yourself with the Tycoon's core functions. It's no big deal. There's the production, stockpiling and distribution of resources, construction, balancing of power output with allocation. Oh, and space exploration, you know, setting out expeditions and all that. Basically, everything needed to establish scientific advancement and harmonious autonomy on board the Tycoon following the first test of its mole engine. Eden's gonna display and keep track of your main objectives. Oh, and Administrator, don't let the position go to your head. Veneer has insisted to center Dolos' focus on the Tycoon. But this mission is just in preparation for our next project, the Protagoras. The Marduk Council worked damn hard to pull this mission together ahead of schedule. So, toe the line, do as you're told, and bring the Tycoon back in one piece. Leave the grand gestures and saving of mankind from ecosystemic destruction to us, okay? One last word of advice. We don't all think like Veneer Dolos. As of yet, no human law has been officially established amongst the stars. That sounds like an opportunity knocking to me. And that should be the initial uh, dialogue out of the way. So, since I have disabled the tutorials, I'm not going to be getting cues for what to uh, build. Um, you, when you first play the game, will of course get those tutorials. They will pop up here, and it's already uh, I can already go and look at or already I can go look at them, even though I have the tutorials disabled. The only thing is that I don't get a. Uh, notification every time that I, there is something new going on in the tutorials. Um, but this is relevant here because we have three different player views as you can see. Interior, exterior and planetary system map. Uh, you can pause if you want to read. You have the uh, camera controls for the interior, camera controls for the exterior and of course the camera controls for the planetary system map. Uh, next up we have the buildings there is a very good and decent overview of the buildings here. I like the tutorials here. Construction, how to build them, uh, how to rotate them, that they have to be connected by a road. Assembly, that's how the uh, building of the uh, buildings actually uh, work. You have to have a workshop for that. And finally, the roads and how the roads function. Then you have a quick guide to uh, sectors. Uh, quick, this is probably one of the more uh, encompassing guides in terms of text. And of course, a uh, quick little overview of how the minimap down in the uh, left corner works. And the time control, which is basically the game speed. It doesn't really uh, tell you what the cycles are, but we'll get back to that. So, time controls. Let's just pause the game now, because we are in cycle 4 already. Uh, you cannot pause the game while you're listening to dialogue. Uh, so, if I had paused the game while Eden or uh, the um, Giovanni Battista guy were talking, uh, the dialogue would also have paused. So, um, I'm not sure if that is intentional or what it is. It's probably intentional, because it represents time... Um, flowing and I mean they're talking so although I find it curious that they spend three cycles talking um, so there is that but we'll have to start out with the uh, internal construction and uh, we need a workshop and we need a stockpile actually we need two stockpiles 
Um, but before we do that, uh, you might have some questions as to what the heck is going on here. So, we are in Sector 1. Uh, the ship has six sectors all in all. Each sector is a separate city, so to speak. And these walls here, uh, or gateways, uh, they are uh, locked from the uh, beginning of the game. Later on we will get the opportunity to open these sectors. But for now, this is the sector that we uh, have to deal with, Sector 1. And all of these crates on the floor, if I hover above them, you can see that they, they are resources that we can collect. Now, I like to play the game with uh, the resources HUD turned on, because it makes things a lot more easy for me to see things. And uh, quickly here, uh, fee. G. Um, that of course is iron, uh, but in the raw form, uh, which you can refine into alloys later on. And as you can see, there's plenty of alloys lying around on on the uh, sector one floor here. Uh, carbon can be refined into polymer. Uh, there are some polymer lying around as well here. Silicon can be refined into electronics, and then hydrogen is a late game uh, or mid to late game, I guess resource uh, which you can uh, transfer transform into uh, power with nuclear power plants and then we have waste um, we'll get back to that I'm, I'm it's that's complicated ice uh, we can mine ice from uh, I guess comets and asteroids and that is transformed into water by a fusion station uh, and it is required for uh, mid to late game food. The early game food does not require water, though. Uh, the lucky and happy inhabitants of the Tycoon... I love the pun in that name, by the way. Uh, they are uh, blessed with having to eat insects uh, for the uh, foreseeable future. <laughs> then we have the cryonic pods. I'll just call them cryopods. Uh, these are exactly what you think they are. Uh, frozen people, and you have to thaw them. And that's how we'll end up getting uh, more population on board the Tycoon eventually. And then we have the science. Uh, science is a resource that is somewhat finite. All of the resources are actually finite, but you'll see that as the game progresses. I'm trying not to give away too many spoilers here. This is kind of difficult. Um, and of course you have the population on board the Tycoon. This bar here represents the uh, power. Uh, we are currently using 14 out of 60 power. And we have 46 available. Which you can quickly see at a glance here. Uh, we have a hull integrity, which is perfect. We have trust, which is about 54%. So, ish in the middle here. And it's rising by 0.9% per cycle. So, things are looking up here. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the details of the interface here, but we do have the uh, minimap down here, some details about the sector. Maybe I should hover a little bit slower so that you guys can pause if you want to see these in detail. Uh, battery power, uh, sector power usage, and also water. Uh, we'll get back to these two buttons and the rest of these buttons later on. Um, but we can quickly show the Tycoon exterior view which is here, you can rotate. And this is also where we get power. Uh, you have the exterior uh, construction button here, but we do need a building for that, the EVA airlock. And finally, we have the planetary system map. We are in the Sol system. And these icons here, they require science ships and they are science events. I do have a video on my channel that covers the uh, science events, both in this part of the game, this is the prologue, and then for the uh, first chapter of the game, when we have completed the prologue. But let's start building things. First of all, uh, we need to build, uh, not a road, but a workshop. Uh, the workshop defaults to having the arrows. You can see the small yellow arrows. That's where the uh, building wants a road. We'll have to rotate that. It turns green when it is connected to a road. Um, I'm going to build this up in the corner here, I think. Uh, one handy thing is that if you disassemble a building, you get the same amount of resources back that you paid for the building. But these two first buildings are free. Uh, we'll also build a stockpile up here. And I don't think we need to build another one just yet. We have to set this one to uh, 
deal with alloys. A stockpile can only deal with one resource. You cannot store more than one type of resource in a stockpile, except for when you are emptying a stockpile and moving the, in, the uh, stored goods to another stockpile. Then it will briefly, momentarily, for a short time, long time, depending on stockpile availability, it will have both of them. However, the only resource the stockpile will be able to serve to the station is the one that is selected. Then we will start by tearing down these. It's simply a matter of just clicking the icons. And uh, the uh, stockpile uh, vehicles will be responsible for collecting these. Meanwhile, we'll set up the uh, uh, workshop, the mechs, to uh, build some roads so that we can start collecting more of these resources because not only do I want to um, collect the resources, but I also want to clear up the uh, docking bay floor or the sector floor because um, these are in the way when I want to construct things. Let's just start up the game and uh, you can zoom in and see the mech coming down here to start to build roads. You can see the cars here or vehicles of some sort that are collecting the resources. You can see that the numbers go down here and the numbers go up here as the uh, vehicles transport. And you can even see that the stockpile is filling up. I have established a connection with Dolus's lead data scientist, Emma Klein. Administrator, Mr. Dolus has made it abundantly clear when it comes to security. Given the importance of the tycoon, we must have full control over what is happening inside the station. My name is Emma Klein, Dolus's lead data scientist and member of the Marduk Council. My department have just completed final synchronization between Eden and our data treatment tool, the DLS. The DLS, or data listening system, is capable of scanning, recording, and parsing exchanges of any kind. The DLS programming that is a part of Eden will filter all data collected and bring to your attention only the most relevant information. It will also provide you with a condensed overview of any situations that may arise and formulate potential future outcomes. It will permit you to give direct orders without having to go through additional unnecessary paperwork. Eden will then take care of everything via their DLS accreditation. As is often the case with tools produced by my department, I think you'll find that once you start using the DLS, you'll never be able to do without it. Oh, and before I let you go ahead and start writing history, Dr. Munshi, our lead medical expert, wanted me to bring to your attention a possible side effect of bull jumping. Whilst there is a correlation between prolonged space travel and the development of early onset dementia, he believes that a vol jump has the potential to accelerate this process, although this is yet to be proven. His recommendation is for you to immediately send any crew members that are exhibiting uncharacteristic or symptomatic behavior to an infirmary, as these facilities are equipped to treat the mind as well as the body. Remember that all of your actions and choices are being reported by Eden. We are not affiliated with any national or even international organization. The only people that you are answerable to are those of us who sit on the Marduk Council, who represent the collective interests and ambitions of the company. I like that everything is voice acted. Whenever Eden tells you that a new request awaits your consideration, you'll have to look for a building with the um, uh, spyglass no, it's not a spy glass. Magnifying glass icon. Administrator. Tycoon crew members are currently unable to access food supplies. Nyakond protocols direct the construction of a mess hall. This building is designed to distribute food from our stockpiles to the crew. Guaranteeing access to food supplies would reaffirm your competency as admin an administrator. And we don't have an option, so we will have to ensure access to food. Probably a beneficial thing. Now, one thing to mention is that stockpiles do use power and they also require workers, so we'll have to manage our workers. Currently, we have uh, 21 workers required for the sector, which is 5 in this, 4 in this, and 12 in this. Uh, I want to build two more stockpiles, so let's uh, do that up here. Uh, this one will set to uh, do alloys, and this one will set to do food. And I also think it would be a good idea to have another workshop, to be honest, because I do want to build things rather quickly at this point. 
and I'll probably build yet another stockpile for alloys as well because um, there is a lot of alloys lying around here and like this one is 90 and I want the space down here because one of the things that I found is that having the uh, space, um, let's say for instance a docking bay, on the upper wall is actually not a good idea because you can see those little red uh, squares down there uh, underneath the sign. The sign blocks your ability to build uh, these uh, bays up there. I'm not sure if you can fit two of them in. Let's see. You can, you can just fit two of them in, actually, on each side. So, but I, I like having them down in here instead. Because I'm kind of confused as to what to use those uh, eight. Yeah, it's eight spaces here that I'm... Well, what do I use those for? So I've, I've just tended to prefer to build them down here. You might have noticed that I have them down here in uh, if you've watched my... Um, my uh, tips video or things that I wish that I knew before I played Ixion. Okay, that one is done. So let's uh, collect food and more alloys. And yes, I definitely need to build another stockpile for uh, for alloys. So let's just do that right away. Um, I guess here is as good a spot as any. I can move it anyways later on. We also need to build some crew quarters, an infirmary, and we also need to build a mess hall. Uh, for now, I think we'll go with building two crew quarters here. We do want our population to have uh, access to housing. Uh, we'll build a mess hall beside that, and a road going out to that mess hall. And I think we'll go all the way over there, like that, and then start collecting these two as well. Uh, that road will be removed again. Roads are free to build, and they are also free to uh, to um, delete. They take time in terms of a mech have to construct them, but deleting them is instantaneous, so that's a good thing. Already up to 30 power usage. Hmm. This one needs to be set to alloys. I also need a stockpile for polymer, but um, let's get rid of these things first. Uh, maybe I can reuse one of these for polymer. Okay, so we have housing for 30 of our 85 population. Uh, I want to build an infirmary. And I also want to build two more houses. And then the road can go like that. Ah, we also need a road going out like that, so we can access that one. The game is thankfully very liberal with how many resources you get at the beginning of the game, particularly alloys, food, and, uh, and also polymer, because those are the three core resources that you need um, for the Tycoon. Transmission from Marduk Council Member Henry Bargeville. Uh, thank you, Eden. As I was saying, uh, you need those three resources primarily. Uh, eventually, you'll also need electronics, but uh, alloy, carbon, and food are the most important three resources for the tycoon to function. Let's hear what Henry Bargeville has to say. Bonjour, administrator. What a wonderful day to embrace your faith, don't you think? I am Henri Bargeville. Writer, philosopher, lobbyist, but most of all member of the Marduk Council. I have taken the liberty of personally arranging an exchange out of courtesy with the Oshanabi, a ship in high orbit belonging to one of our commercial allies, the Ashtangites. Even so, they are a small organization. The Ashtangites are important partners who share the same pragmatic, moralistic, and spiritual outlook as we do. The Ushanabi will provide us with a source of food while carrying out the Tycoon's initial testing. By making it the first exclusive trade partner of the Tycoon, we will demonstrate to our long-term allies that Dolos wishes for them to share in our successes. Please assign a cargo ship so that we can check the trade routines. 
administrator, trust in genetic connectors. Self similar space will reveal the pattern. He sounds a bit weird, to be honest. Uh, while he was talking, I built another stockpile and I set it to alloys first, but then I reconsidered and I uh, moved it over to polymer instead. Uh, we need polymer to build ships, so um, let's start collecting the polymer. There is exactly 100 of it, so that's nice. Another, another request here. Some crew members are lacking quarters. During human history, a necessary homelessness has always been an indicator, an indicator of civilizational decay. Do not reproduce humanity's basic mistakes aboard the Tycoon. We can ensure that all crew are quartered within 12 cycles, or we can say that there are more pressing resource needs. But of course, building, we already have room for 60, so we only need one more housing. So let's just ensure that it's not going to take 12 cycles anyways. And let's just build two more houses over here. And that should actually put us above above what we need in terms of uh, of houses, housing space. We can also start removing some of these roads. And we do have enough polymer to build a cargo vessel, so let's build a cargo ship. We do have a lot of alloys, 271. The only factory you can build currently is a tech lab, so... Um, but I'm going to wait building that, because that is huge. One thing that I'm definitely uh, looking forward to in regards to uh, Ixion is... Um, we just completed the uh, quarters mission, by the way. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how people uh, manage the uh, very limited space that we have in terms of each sector. And that's one of the uh, really interesting challenges about the uh, the game. And it's also quite different from Frostpunk. I mean, we, we had kind of limited space available in Frostpunk 2. We were uh, limited by the size of the, um, I guess, crater would be a good uh, way to put it that the uh, city uh, you were building could be built inside, but uh, in uh, Frostpunk you had to use uh, heating elements so that the houses didn't uh, get too cold, or not just the houses, but any workplace really. That thankfully is not something that we have to deal with here, so we, we have this, this space available to us. I haven't counted how many tiles uh, the, the space is, but uh, yeah. Let's build a science ship as well. We have uh, this mission up here, space exploration. Uh, now, we need to order the uh, cargo ship to retrieve food. The way to do that is to go into the fleet management, and uh, you have high priority, medium priority, and low priority. And I quickly... Uh, you might not have seen my tips video, so... When you left-click uh, on an item, uh, you go to high priority. Left-clicking again takes it to medium priority, and again goes to low priority, and then you turn it off entirely. You can also right click to go the opposite way, so, and you can do that interactively. Uh, we are going to set food to be high priority so that we send off the uh, cargo ship. It, uh, this is the science ship we're building. I'm guessing the cargo ship is already on en route. Yes, it is. It's already visited the ocean obbies, and now, yeah, it's already arriving back. I don't think it can dock. Yeah, waiting to dock. It has to wait until this ship is uh, done being constructed. The same applies if there was another cargo ship. Uh, why isn't this going away? Hello? I think I might have encountered a minor bug here. Because I can't remove it. Uh, that's a bit of a bummer. <laughs> Uh, let me uh, save the game and uh, reload so that uh, I can get this dialogue away because that, that's actually the first time I've encountered a bug except for one specific um, 
instance I had where the um, game was unable to fetch the name of the science ship. So I just got a, uh, in, in a science event, so I just got a science or bracket science underscore ship underscore name bracket end. But yeah, be right back. Thankfully that worked, so let's just uh, get right uh, into the game again. I'm thinking we can probably go on fast time speed here. Uh, we need to clean up more roads though. And we can also build roads out until... rather to the final uh, collection points here. I'm going to tear down parts of that road, I think. Not sure about how I'm going to do the grid here, to be honest. What I do want to do, though, is I want to build a docking bay, and I want to build that down here. I'm not too concerned. Like, okay, let me just quickly explain something here, and I'll pause the game while I do that. Uh, as you can see, there are four little... Let's do a road tool instead. There are four little yellow arrows here. These are the connection points to the other sector. You can see them on the other side as well. You don't need all four of these to be open. So in my case here, I'm going to build the docking bay right next to the wall instead of having a road going down here. I could have a road going down there, but it's fine that as long as they have at least one access point, that's plentiful. So we'll build the docking bay down here. Uh, now that does need a road. Wait, I don't want it there, actually. I want it here. Well, that's fine. I can uh, dismantle this. And we'll build a road going down to the building. Note that you, do, you don't need to build a road on all the arrows. It's sufficient to build a road on one of the arrows. Each of the stockpile buildings also has a limited amount of vehicles available, so having three stockpiles providing alloys is... Uh, that, that's why the uh, the docking bay got so uh, many alloys that quickly. Of course, it helps that we're playing on fast time speed as well, but yeah, uh, that's, that's a good reason to have several uh, stockpiles when you're in a construction phase. Also, the alloys are mostly done, uh, mostly done, mostly used for interior building. The polymer are mostly used for exterior building and uh, also for uh, the ships. If I wanted to build another solar panel, that would require polymer. Get rid of those two. I really want to get rid of that one and that one, but that's going to be a lot. Okay, the docking bay is almost done. Yeah, let's hear what she has, has to say. Insufficient levels of electricity generation. Sector 1's power demand has overloaded. Stanford routines recommend that you construct an external solar panel to boost overall electrical output. Yep, we can do that. Empower the Tycoon. So we'll have to go into the uh, Tycoon exterior view, but I don't have an EVA lock, so I can't do it right yet. What I am going to do, however, I'm going to unassign these vessels from here. I could dismantle them, but I don't see the point in doing that because that means I need to build them over again. Then I'll assign them back into this docking bay in a different order as well. And we will power this one off and dismantle it. That gave me 60 alloys back, which is exactly what I paid to build. So you get a 1-1 one, one back. No, I didn't want to, uh, to build. I wanted to assign. Good thing I noticed that it was taking in polymer. I don't need two cargo ships currently. Let's see. The cargo ship... Yep, it has maintained its... Um, 
uh, priorities. I'm going to add uh, alloys and polymer and electronics and people to the list of uh, what the cornucopia can uh, go and pick up. Uh, you currently cannot rename ships, sadly. Although I was very amused in my uh, uh, test game run where I played into chapter 2, where I got a ship named Santa's Sleigh. I guess that's seasonally appropriate. Okay, we're full up on pollen, uh, on uh, alloys here. Um, we need to send uh, the science ship to the moon. So let's do that. It's literally just clicking the science ship down here. And then you get the uh, move action. So we'll send it to the moon. It shouldn't take too long. I mean, it's not that far of a distance. A science ship has arrived at its destination. Now, as I mentioned in my video where I have uh, a guide to the science ship choices, for now, I can move the science ship. The moment I click the magnifying glass here, I start the event and the ship is locked to the moon unless I get an option saying that I can leave and return later. But let's uh, have a look at the events here. Summary of intelligence on the abandoned base. The base is out of commission. Auxiliary power systems are, op or rather, auxiliary systems are operational and could be used to restore power. Transmission from the Maxwell's team. That's our science ship, by the way. We have reached the UN base. It is abandoned and depressurized. The surveillance system is still operational, awaiting orders. This is how many cycles it takes to complete the um, choice that you decide to make. Um, some missions are an either-or thing. Uh, some missions allow you to make multiple choices. In this case, if I chose to dismantle the base, then obviously I could not exploit any kind of security vulnerability after that. Um, so we'll go ahead and hack into the surveillance system, uh, which will uh, send the Maxwell's team to access the base central systems and retrieve any confidential data present. That'll take one cycle, so let's do that. Um, but I would not have been able to move the ship again. I think it give me a... Yep, the science ship Maxwell is currently investigating an event. I'm actually not sure if... Uh, I need to test that. We, we, we'll test that, but that'll be in the next episode. Because if you send a science ship to... Um, a planet or a point of interest that has a science event, maybe it actually locks the ship there the moment the ship arrives, and you can't move it away again until you actually go into the event and resolve it. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is also a, one of the things that I was uh, thinking about when I said in my intro that I'm not sure if I'm going to edit these videos. I'm not going to edit this one in terms of this, but... Or, or if I will uh, just um, use the pause button or what I will do. Team has a task. Because waiting. There is there is waiting involved here. And filling that space with uh, me talking and chattering along is not always the easiest thing. Because sometimes I might not have anything to talk about. <laughs> okay. Transmission from the Maxwell's team. We hacked into the main computer systems as you ordered and retrieved several relevant research papers and datasets. That gives us 10 signs ready for extraction. And now we can also choose to dismantle the base, so we'll do that. That'll take two more cycles. Let's pop into the interior view again and have a look at whether or not I want to build anything. No, we need this to be uh, dismantled, so... Uh... That'll take some time. Uh, it'll actually take forever currently because uh, there is no more room for alloys. Uh, let's build another stockpile. We do have power for that. I think I want to build it down here. And set it to accept alloys. Now we have to wait for the uh, construction mech to come down and finish the building. 
yeah, you do get notifications over here, so... When the uh, science event on the moon is done, we'll get a uh, we will get a notification for it, so... I can't do anything with this stuff up here just yet. I want this to be very different from what it is, looks like right now. But I can't remove the roads because the buildings are dependent upon the roads, so... Okay, uh, so we have... I can start... Yeah, let's go collect that. We have housing for 90 people. You can see that in the population management. I don't know if you can see it from out here. No, you actually can't. You can see that I'm getting a plus one sector stability modifier from people living mostly in crew quarters, but... Oh, um, if you look at that dialogue down there, you can see... Plus 10 from Almighty Dolos buff. And there's an icon at the end there. That icon represents the Tycoon. That means that it's a global bonus that applies to the entirety of the Tycoon. Whereas the one that doesn't have the icon, plus one from people living mostly in crew quarters, that means that that only applies to this specific sector. So that is also uh, useful information to have. Let's uh, take a look at the moon. I'm going to also address the collecting science thing there. Transmission from the Maxwell's team. The base has been dismantled. Although most equipment was damaged, we were able to prepare some usable resources for extraction. And now we can end the data listening protocol. And that ends the um, event chain at the moon. Now, this science is not automatically transferred into the uh, Tycoon. I have a science ship here. And you can see it says ship collecting science and it's gradually collecting a little bit of science every three seconds or so so you need i can't just send this ship up to mars then i'll leave the science here i could go back and pick it up later if i wanted to but i we need that science for now so i'm just going to leave the ship here until we have collected all that science we'll get a notification over here when the ship is done collecting the science so you can easily go back in here and continue building if you wanted to do that, uh, and you will be notified when the ship is ready to uh, go elsewhere. However, with that, I think we have reached the end of this first episode. Uh, it got rather on the long end at uh, nearly uh, 50 minutes. So, yeah. I hope that you uh, are uh, eager about this series, as I would love to share the joys that I've had from this game so far with you guys. And it also, since I've been focusing on role-playing games mostly for a very long time now, uh, minor spoiler, there is another one of those coming in as well. Also an Alcat game, Rogue Trader, Warhammer 40,000. They are entering the alpha stage now. Uh, today, actually, since I'm releasing this on... Wednesday the 7th, which is Wednesday the 7th of December 2022, for those of you who might watch this in the future. And uh, I am getting a, an alpha key for that one, and uh, yeah, I kind of have to cover that. I mean, it's both a CRPG, which I love, and it's also an Alcat game, which I also love. So, yeah. Okay, let's um, wrap up the video. So... Thank you all so very much for joining me. Uh, please leave any comments and or feedback, questions, anything. Uh, leave those in the comment section. Uh, or you can even leave a little emoji down there if you want to help the channel out with uh, the algorithm visibility. It will be greatly appreciated. That also goes for liking the video. If you like the video, then please consider to click that little button down there. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, I know it might be a hassle, but uh, and I'm not going to beg for people doing that in all of my episodes. But yeah, it, it's been, in this episode, I kind of feel that it's uh, a kind of a nice thing to to uh, mention. With that, 
I hope I'll see you all in the next episode.